Good morning. Welcome to St. James. Dear parishioners, thank you for continuing to wear your face mask while in church, especially during mass and time spent in prayer in our chapel. During the pandemic, Bishop Johnston has encouraged all to receive the body of Christ in the hand. Deacons and lay ministers are not permitted to distribute on the tongue at this time. We are all challenged to offer up the momentary discomfort as a small penance and a way to show God's love to all we encounter. Thanks to all of you who have donated to the Advent Giving Tree, or AGT. With two weeks to go, you have already provided two-thirds of the funds we need to fulfill requests. As in previous years, the AGT donations will help needy families have a better Christmas provide lots of smiles to nursing home residents, help fund essentials at two local pantries, and support efforts at Hillcrest Hope and Love, Inc. To donate after Mass, please look for the Christmas tree and donation box in the gathering space. You can also mail your donation to St. James Church or drop it off at the parish office. Thanks again for your generous support. The Pastoral Council is sponsoring a winter coat drive again this year. In addition to coats, we need socks, gloves, scarves, and warm clothing. Donations are being accepted now through Christmas. Please bring your donations to the Narthex, which is the entrance of the former church. There are two piles, one for adults and one for children. See the bulletin for more details. Our final blood drive of the year will be on Tuesday, November 24th in the Social Hall from 12.30 to 6.30 p.m. The Community Blood Center desperately needs our help. COVID-19 has forced many mobile blood drives like ours to cancel, leaving the CBC with a very limited blood supply. We encourage anyone who is over 16 years of age and healthy to donate blood. Appointments are preferred and masks are required. All presenting donors will receive a free limited edition Chiefs t-shirt. Please see the bulletin for information on how to sign up today. Today we celebrate the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Together we sing, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Please stand.
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May God's peace and love be with you. Well, as we gather on this sunny November morning, we come towards the end of the church year. And we listen in the scripture readings to being ready, using our gifts and talents to serve God's people. And so as we come together, we welcome all who are visiting our community. And we are also live streaming this Mass because we might have had some technical difficulties at 8 a.m. So we want to make sure that those who are in need of the live stream are being reached out to. And so let us pause as we call to mind the mercy and forgiveness of a loving God. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. 
She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. 
Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come, like a thief at night. When people are saying, peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to a third one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with it and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off, dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His servant said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share in your master's joy. Then the one who had received one talent came forth and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person harvesting where you did not plant, gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried my, your, tre your talent in the ground. 
Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked and lazy servant, so you knew that I harvest where I did not plant, and I gather where I did not scatter. Should you not have put my money in the bank so that I could have gotten it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten, for to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But to the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, I don't know about you, but um, I'm a person who loves the sunshine. And so even though it might be cold and windy out, if the sun is shining, like this morning, it always makes a difference. And so when I listen to that line out of St. Paul's reading that says, we are not people of darkness, we are people of light. When the scriptures use the image of darkness, darkness symbolizes evil, it symbolizes fear, it, sim it symbolizes anxiety and worry. But light symbolizes the resurrection, new life, hope, and love. You know, as we journey through this pandemic time, which all of us are pretty worn out after, no doubt, because we don't see much of an end in sight, and we're worried and concerned about those who are most physically vulnerable, it's oftentimes easy to say, where is God in all this? But I think God is right in the midst of it, because what God is teaching us is, life doesn't always go the way that I want it. And so I can come up with all kinds of excuses about why I shouldn't be wearing masks, or how it doesn't have to happen, but we have to be safe, we have to be healthy, we have to look out for one another. That's what I think God is trying to tell us. And that that's the part of life. You who are parents and raising your children, you have to tell them that it's not always going to go the way that you want it to go. But through it all, the power of God is always at work. And so we're live streaming this Mass once again this morning because we always want to make sure we're reaching out to those who are not with us. The physically vulnerable, the elderly, those who want to be here, but are not able. And for those of you who come, we thank you for that. And just a word about why we have the pews marked the way we do. It's a tremendous job to disinfect and clean the pews following each Mass. And we want to make sure that we're six foot distance as much as we can. And so we have other, every other pew marked off. But we also understand that some people don't move to the center. So you can open a pew, just turn the card over to say that someone has sat here, and try not to sit directly behind or directly in front of someone. It's a challenge for all of us, and, but it's one that we're trying to do the best that we can and still be able to bring people to church because we know what's happened during the time of the lockdown and we don't want that to happen. We want to continue to offer the church to be a safe, healthy place for us to come and celebrate the Eucharist. As we listen to the scriptures at the end of the church year, next weekend, because we're listening to the Gospel of Matthew, we'll hear the famous Gospel about the Last Judgment. When I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. It's real clear what Jesus wants us to do. And in this scripture, we are the people given gifts and talents. And so the master gets mad at the people who just bury their talents and do nothing with them because they have wasted their life. And so the question we ask ourselves is, what are the gifts and talents that I have been given? And how do I share those? It's very easy to see gifts and talents and virtues in other people, but it's sometimes hard to see it in ourselves. But think for a moment about the people we admire. I don't admire people who are selfish and self-centered and greedy but I admire people who, in, even in difficult struggles, they continue to be people of hope 
they continued to be people of love, and they continued to be people of compassion. You know, the past couple of weeks, we have celebrated the lives of many people who have gone before us and have had some beautiful celebrations of life in their funeral liturgies. Well, yesterday, we celebrated the life of Marvin Weishar, and Marvin and Mary have been longtime parishioners here from the early 60s. I remember as a boy in the old church off the square that Mary had this beautiful men's choir that sang up in the choir loft. And since those days, Mary has always been a part of our music ministry. And so yesterday, we celebrated his life. And Marvin was a tremendous member of this community, both he and his family, involved in so many different ways, were very generous in their time, their talent, and their treasure. And Marvin was also involved in the larger community. They were an example to me because they were very influential people for me growing up. They were an example of me, to me, of what stewardship is all about. They gave of their time, their talent, and their treasure in so many ways. And these past few months have been very difficult for them because they had to be in an assisted living center and not been oftentimes close to each other. But even in the midst of death, we celebrated his life. And I firmly believe that he's in, in heaven watching over us, watching over his family, watching over this parish that he loves so deeply. We always have to be a people of hope. We can't fall into worry, anxiety, and fear. I know parents raising your children, you're very worried about what they might do or what they won't do, or how do you pass on the gift of faith or God's love to them, but you have to let go of it. You have to do the best job you can. I have to do the best job I can as pastor, but leave the rest to God. I know that being pastor of a large parish, you have people who have lots of varied opinions about what should happen. Uh, coming from a large family who are very vocal, they let me know firsthand of the way the parish should be run. Uh, so I'm used to that. But each and every morning and each and every night, I just say, God, open me to be the best possible person, priest, and pastor you call me to be. And I have to let go of the rest. And I think that's what I hear in this gospel, is that we always have to hold on to hope. We always have to be people of love. You know, we've just gotten through, well, hopefully gotten through, a very, very difficult, contentious election. And it's really divided us as a nation, which is very sad to see. But we pray for President-elect Biden and for our country that we might come together and heal the divisions. We should never be separated because of race or ethnicity or backgrounds. And we shouldn't tear one another down, whether it's within our own families, in a community, or as a nation. And everybody's got their own opinion about how the country should be run and who should be running it. But right now, all we can do is put our nation in the hands of God and ask for the power of God's Spirit to lead us and guide us to be the people of which our country is founded on liberty and justice for all and equality for all, and that we might be a welcoming country and take care of the most vulnerable, the poor, the lonely, the abandoned. And that's what our task is. That's what I admire about St. James Parish, is that we can come together in very difficult times, that we can support each other, and that if someone is in need, there's always people who will reach out to them, whether it's our groups of the Knights of Columbus or the Altar Society or the Pastoral Council or the various individuals and those who maintain our landscaping each and every week. Whatever it is, we're all in it for what is best for our community. And how do we live that out in our own ordinary, everyday ways? We have the Advent Giving Tree as an example, and that's always been a very successful project that serves the poor and the needy, of which there are a lot more poor and needy right now. I can tell you that firsthand by the numbers in our own community who have come forward in need. But we can't do the Advent Giving Tree like we always do, being able to purchase gifts and using our family as the opportunity to do that. 
but your donations will go to benefit the agencies that serve the poor. And so we have the Christmas tree and a box out there, and you can offer your donation, which is very helpful. Also, this weekend, to sign up for St. Mary's Soup Kitchen. You know, it's very easy at times like this to back away from a program, but serving the poor and needy is not something we can back away from. Don Allyard has coordinated such a powerful effort of personally cooking the food himself and getting a group of people to serve each and every month. And again, the numbers that come to food kitchens, to soup kitchens, has increased because of what we're going through. This community always responds. And so I know your generosity today to Don and, the, and St. Mary's Soup Kitchen will continue the work of the gospel. Next weekend, when we hear this powerful gospel, it always makes me nervous because I was thinking, how many times did I turn away someone in need when I'm really turning away Jesus? How many times did I not appreciate someone in my life because of some conflict with them, but really I was turning away Jesus because each of us are Jesus to one another. And we don't serve the poor because they need it. We serve the poor because we have an obligation to share what we have been given. We, can't, we don't know individuals' circumstances privately, but I give, I donate because I have a need to try to be as generous and compassionate as I can. If I don't do that, then I become very selfish. And that's what the master in the gospel gets angry at. You wicked, lazy servant. All you did was go and bury your talents and receive nothing and did nothing with it. That's what the Lord is saying to us. That remember how generous, how forgiving, how compassionate God has been in my life and our lives. And we also lift up those folks who suffer from depression and mental and emotional illnesses and addictions for whom this time um, is a very difficult time. There's no doubt about it. It is for the healthiest of people. So it's hard for those who are going through struggles. But again, we as a church are there for one another, are here for each other. And all we're called to do is to share whatever we have been given with others. It's a very simple message. Nobody would argue with love one another, but how do we do that each and every day? Not in some great magnificent way, maybe some of us are called, but it's in the everyday ordinary ways in which we, how we treat one another. And so may we remember what we celebrate this morning, the goodness of God, the grace of God, and that no matter what the darkness of our lives is, the power of God's grace the gift of hope and the gift of God's love is always leading us, always guiding us. So together we stand as we profess. I believe in one Lord, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With joy and hope, we present our petitions to our generous and loving Father. For God's holy church, may it recognize and welcome the talents of all the faithful in building up the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may they show a preferential option for the poor in implementing just economic systems. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all unemployed and underemployed adults, especially those affected by the pandemic, may they find work that matches their talents and provide a living wage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering due to the wildfires, hurricanes, and other natural disasters, that they may be supported and protected as they put their lives back together, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers and fathers who await the birth of their child, that God might fill their hearts with an ever-deepening love each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead and all those who mourn, may they be comforted by the promise of new life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass when we hold in prayer, George Dixon. For those on the St. James prayer chain, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for all your many gifts. Thank you for the gifts and talents that you have given each of us uniquely. May we put those into service of one another. And in this month of November, as we remember all our beloved dead, we lift up to you the Weishar family and all who have experienced loss recently. May you comfort them and guide them always in the ways of your love through Christ our Lord. My friends, let us pray that our gifts might be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Loving God, from all you give us, we offer you these simple gifts. As you have blessed us with the gift of life, help us to be life-giving in all that we do through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ your son. As our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor. For the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so now with all the angels and saints, together we acclaim.
You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered together by love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, most holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the prayer of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Open our needs, open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in word and action to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our beloved dead in this no month of November and all who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and Father, be with those who have died, alone, unloved, and unmourned. Gather them all together with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with St. James and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And together we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, power and the glory, glory are yours, yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. For those who are not with us this morning but are watching virtually, we have our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to serve you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. During communion, Bishop Johnston has encouraged all to receive the body of Christ in your hands. Deacons and lay ministers are not permitted to distribute on the tongue at this time. As you come forward for communion, we remind you to please keep your mask on, respond amen, receive the body of Christ in your hands, step to the side to remove the mask and consume the body of Christ. Then place mask back on and return to your pew. While in the aisle, please observe the markings on the floor to maintain a safe six-foot distance from the person in front of you. Thank you.
to me are you in darkness come live in my light seek the justice which is hidden within your hearts i have promised a new day i have promised new life take it eat this is my body take and drink this cup of life this living sign of god will shine and dwell within your heart Is not the wine poured out for you a sign for all the world and the life that I offer? Of the life that I give, take and eat, this is my body, take and drink.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly praying, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God bless you and keep you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I look around, I see some Pius t-shirts and some Liberty North t-shirts, so congratulations to both of those teams for advancing their football teams to the division winners and on to the sectionals. We wish you good luck in both of those, those endeavors. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Together we sing for the healing of the nations. Can you help clarify something? Yes. We're confused as to whether or not there's actually a ten that you can attend. Correct. It is you can attend in okay. person and, and it's, it's live being streamed. live streamed. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hi. Yeah, so I just